it has it all. It's got fruit, it's got complexity, it's got length, really good. <laughs> I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. Cabernet Sauvignon is one of the most recognizable red grape varieties in the world. But actually, the grape is from Bordeaux. Bordeaux is a region in the southwest of France that surrounds the city of Bordeaux. It's broken into the left and the right bank of the Gironde estuary. The left bank is more Cabernet Sauvignon based wines and that's what we're gonna taste here today. Bordeaux is home to some of the most collectible, some of the most expensive wines in the world. Although there are a lot of value for money Bordeaux available. I actually did a video about blind tasting grape Bordeaux under $30. I'll drop a link in the description box below. In 1855, Napoleon III ordered for a classification of Bordeaux, and thus, Grand Cru Classé was born. When people refer to the classification of 1855, they're talking about the left bank of the Bordeaux. They're broken into five different tiers, or five different growths, and at the time, they were classified by reputation and price, not necessarily quality. When you're talking about first growths like Latour, Lafitte, those wines can go for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a bottle, but they're great wines made at all levels of the classification. Although they're the most famous wines in Bordeaux, classified growth Bordeaux makes up only 5% of the total production of Red Bordeaux. To know that you're getting a classified growth Bordeaux, you'll see Grand Cru Classe in 1855 on the label. Napa Cabernet Sauvignon kind of had its claim to fame in 1976 when Stephen Spurrier put on a Judgment of Paris pitting top class Bordeaux against Napa Cabernet Sauvignon. It was depicted in the film Bottle Shock. It was also shown in the great book The Judgment of Paris by George Tabor. I'll put that in the link in the description below. It's a super geeky read if you love wine. And in the Judgment of Paris, a Chateau Montalena Chardonnay beat out a bunch of white burgundies while a Stag's Leap wine cellars beat out some of the great red Bordeaux. Here I have wines from the 2018 vintage from California and Bordeaux. 2018 was one of the great vintages in both areas in the last couple of decades. California vintages are a little bit more even, but they can be exceptional like 2018, especially in Napa. In Bordeaux, vintage really matters and warmer vintages means the wine are usually going to be a little more plush, a little more approachable, and easier to drink at a younger age. I'm going to do a little tasting of California Cabernet Sauvignon versus Grand Cru Bordeaux. What I'm looking for, usually in California, the wine can be a little bit riper, a little softer, a little bit easier to drink, whereas Bordeaux can sometimes be a little more tannic, a little astringent. That might be different with a great vintage like 2018 where it's a little bit ripe. When I think of Cabernet Sauvignon and Bordeaux blends, I usually think of things like dark cherry, cassis, black plum type flavors and then as the wine starts to age in oak you get some tobacco some cedar those leather notes those usually are more prominent in Bordeaux for me I won't be surprised if I'm fooled in this tasting for blind tasting these Bordeaux I'm gonna use the Gabriel glass universal glass I absolutely love this glass works great for every type of wine especially Bordeaux this is my favorite all-around glass to use and I'll drop a link in the description below these are not cheap wines by any stretch of the imagination so I'm really treating myself Took me a long time to put this tasting together. Wine one is a little bit more restrained. It's not a big monster. Got those tobacco notes that I really, really like about Bordeaux. The thing about Cabernet Sauvignon is the finish. There's a lot of length. This is gonna be really, really, really hard. Wine two isn't popping as much as wine number one was. I might lean that wine two is actually from California because the fruit feels a little bit deeper, a little bit more ripe, almost on the borderline of being a little more candied, so to speak, which some people like quite a bit. It's so funny because I usually don't like these big fruity bombs, but you know what? When they're done well, they're done well. This has length. This is one heck of a wine. Strong start. Wine three, I would bet on my life that it's from California because it is just really ripe. In Bordeaux, I'm looking for more tobacco, more cedar, more earthy type of notes. This comes swinging out of the gate with a lot of plum notes. Uh, it's really super rich. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> Wow, I don't know. At first I thought three was maybe California, but now I don't, God. One thing I've noticed in recent years, Napa especially has been known for humongous cabs. They've really dialed it back. So it really blurs the line. It makes it hard to distinguish. Cabernet Sauvignon and Bordeaux blends are grapes that need to age to kind of unfurl and show their best. Wine four has like some eucalyptus, some menthol type of notes, which I find super attractive. In terms of quality, the first four have been really high all across the board.
Wow. <laughs> wow. The other thing I'm difference I'm seeing is when, uh, when I'm using the distinguished California, I think the wines might be higher in alcohol. They have this little bit of Kirsch kind of liquor on the back end. Alcohol carries flavor, but I feel a little bit more heat on the back end. I also think that sometimes Bordeaux has some more mineral, some more cedar, some more leather type notes. Then again, I'm also tasting these wines on snap judgment. With wines like this, you have to spend time and see how they evolve in the glass. But alas, I can't make <laughs> this video 24 hours because then you wouldn't watch it. Wine five, I don't think has any doubt that's California. It's just like fruit, 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 fruit. Wine five, I think is gonna be the biggest crowd pleaser out of all these wines because it's ready to drink right out of the gate. So a lot of people find it quite fruity. People that drink California Cabernet can want fruitiness, whereas in Bordeaux, there are gonna be a little more nuances, complexities, wines are a little bit leaner. They're not to everybody's liking. I personally prefer some of the nuances in Bordeaux, although I've had great California Cab. Wines, wine five and six, these two, I think are gonna be the biggest crowd pleasers. Super lush, super easy to drink. I have so many wines here that I think maybe you're California, and that's what's difficult in a ripe year in Bordeaux, like 2018. Although this has more cedar notes, let's see how it feels on the mouth. This is what my opinion usually is when it comes to Bordeaux versus California Cabernet. Something like this where the wine at first smells all fruity, but once I put it on my palate, that fruit kind of melts away. I get more mineral, more tobacco notes, and the tannins are just a tad grippier. Wine 8 has it all. It's got fruit, it's got complexity, it's got length. Wine 8 is really good. <laughs> I am confident in what I thought the quality was and how the wine showed today. Then again, you gotta remember that Cabernet Sauvignon and especially Bordeaux are wines that need to age to show their best. Okay, the wine for me that was the least favorite in the tasting today, not because it was a bad wine, I had it at 92 points. It was big, easy. It just wasn't as complex as these other wines, but I think a lot of people are going to like it. Still, 92 points. Let's take a look and see what it is. I called California. Let's see. And I, oh, I got it right. This is the Smith Madrone uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley, California, Spring Mountain. You have to know that Napa is an AVA, American Viticulture Area, but there are 16 different AVAs within Napa Valley. This is the Spring Mountain District. It's a little bit different. I'm surprised that this wasn't as complex because usually in the Spring Mountain, the wines are a bit less in alcohol, a little bit less jammy, cooler fruit flavors. I have to say that this wine does super well with age, maybe just didn't show as well. It's drinking really nice now, but this is also 60 bucks for, a, this is a steal for California Cabernet as far as I'm concerned. And also it's drinking super well now. By the way, the Smith Madrone is 86% Cabernet Sauvignon with a 6% Merlot, 7% Cabernet Franc. I'm actually really sad to see the Smith Madrone not do as well because I'm a big champion of that wine. But that's how blind tasting it goes sometimes, I guess. Okay, next one up, number five, what's wine number five here? I had this at 92 plus points. This is the ripest wine. This is the wine that's the easiest to drink that I think a lot of people are gonna enjoy. I think actually a lot of people might think that this is the best wine if they were drinking it blind. I just prefer Bordeaux type flavors. So I think this is California, 92 plus points. I hope I get right, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. And I did get it right. This is the Grassini Family Vineyards 2018. This is, is $70, 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, this is the highest alcohol wine in the bunch, 15%. So I think a lot of people are going to like this wine. People that you go to a steakhouse, it's gonna be a nice gift. Grassini Family Vineyards is in Happy Cannon of Santa Barbara County. They focus on Bordeaux varieties. Okay, I got it right on California. Next up, also tied with this wine. I had this at 92 plus points. This is the wine that had a little more eucalyptus type notes. This was wine number four. It kind of reminded me of Cabernet Sauvignon from Kunawara in Australia. I think this is California, 92 plus points. Let's take a look here, see. <laughs> it is not. This is the Sato Becheville uh, St. Julian. This is a fourth growth, the most expensive wine in the bunch, $130. This wine usually ages tremendously well. Becheville is one of the outliers on the left bank that's mostly Merlot, although they're starting to change that. This is 50% Merlot, 41% Cabernet Sauvignon with some Petit Verdot and Cabernet Franc mixed in there. It is how it is. When this wine ages, it's beautiful. Next wine up, wine number one. 
This wine was quite restrained, uh, but it really had classic Bordeaux flavors. That's what I, I think is Bordeaux. 93 points. Let's see. I, I got one wrong, so let's see. Let's see. Oh, and it is. This is the Chateau Pedesclo from Pouillac, 2008. Teen. By the way, St. Julian, where the base mill is, usually those wines, when I think of St. Julian, are pretty round. Pudiac, I think of as being a little bit more austere. They sometimes can be powerful. This has a lot of tobacco notes. The Pedesclo is the cheapest wine of the bus, so $55. I think this is screaming value for money. 64% Cabernet Sauvignon, 27% Merlot, 5% Cabernet Franc, and 4% Petit Verdot. 93 points, 55 bucks. If you're looking for classified growth Bordeaux, this is a fifth growth. I think this is worth checking out. From here on out, as we step up, we're getting into some bigger time scores. Wine number three. I thought at first that this might be California, but then I switched to Bordeaux because the fruit was quite candied, but the finish was wrong. It was super complex. 93 plus points. Let's take a look here. Is it Bordeaux? I hope so. I hope I'm getting all these right. It is. This is the Chateau de San from Margot, 2018. Doesn't surprise me that it was a little more candy because Margot, the wines are usually a little bit more powerful. The de San is 60% Cabernet Sauvignon, 40% Merlot, $75. This is a third growth. This is one of the Bordeaux that are, it's pretty round, pretty easy to drink now. Wine number seven. I thought at first up front that this was California because it was super fruit. Fruity. But as I started to drink it, it became, you know, a little bit more Bordeaux-y. The fruit started to fall off. I thought this was outstanding wine. As I drank it, I started to enjoy it more and more and more. 94 points. I think this is Bordeaux, but I think I've got one... I've got room to get one wrong, so let's take it. It is Bordeaux. This is the Chateau Lafont Rocher from Santa Steph, 2018. Santa Steph kind of has some of this gamey character in it. This is a well-renowned chateau. This is a wine that usually is known for making wines beyond its price point. This is 60 bucks. Really, really good value for money. 94 points. 65% uh, Cabernet, 26 Merlot, 4% Cabernet Franc, 6% Petit Verdot. This is the type of wine that can cross over people that like fruitier wines, but you want to start to get them to drink more earthy, more European style wines. I think this is an excellent play here. So the top two. Wine two. This is a wine I had to go back to. And in the second tasting, I elevated the score because it really started to grow in the glass. Uh, I think this is California because it was fruity, a little more candied fruit. However, the length on this is what really, really stuck out. And 94 plus points. I think it's California. Let's take a look here. It is. <laughs> this is the Silverado Vineyards, a state grown Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley. This is listed at 60 bucks, but I've seen it as low as $35, depending on where you get. This is all a state grown fruit. 88% Cabernet Sauvignon, 7% Merlot, 3% Petit Verdot, and 2% Cabernet Franc. I always recommend this wine because if they, people want a taste of Napa, I think it's fantastic wine at, at this type of price. All the California wines here are made from a state grown fruit. The model in California, a lot of times people will just purchase fruit from different wine growers, different landowners, and then make their own wine. But all the California cabs I selected here are made from vineyards that the, the winery owns. I have this last one at 95 points. I thought that this was excellent. It had everything, it had fruit, it had complexity. I thought it was Bordeaux. And I am wrong. And this wine has always impressed me in the past, my goodness. Star Lane Vineyard, Cabernet Sauvignon from Happy Canyon, Santa Barbara County. <sighs> I gotta look. Let's see. This is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, 65 bucks. I've had a couple vintages of this that were just outstanding. And uh, look, I guess in my mini judgment of Paris, the top two were California. Wow, and the, the second place was one of the less expensive wines in the bunch. But I wanna hear from you. What are some of your favorite California Cabernet Sauvignons? What are some of your favorite Bordeaux? And what do you think the differences are between the two? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon.